This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Coming up, we check out a racing game that takes the concept to a whole new level with Dyash. Oh. Totally Show. Totally totally Hey everybody, welcome to the Totally Rad Show. We've got a great week for you this week. Today we're talking about the indie game Dyad that has just come out. Well, a little while ago now, but tomorrow we're bringing back a game we haven't played in quite a while. Yes. What is it, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Title, Title fight. fight. Very fun. Then on Wednesday, after all the Comic-Con craziness, yes. and all the IMAX sold out screens that you guys have attended, we finally get to sink our teeth into Vampire that's, Diaries. That's teeth. Uh, <laughs> that's the, dark, the, that's, the Dark Knight Rises. Very Super nice. <laughs> uh, Thursday, we're back for uh, one of our new games, Rad Rebus, which I'm very excited to lose again. And then Friday, we've got a interesting movie that you are definitely going to want to have on your radar. It's called Clown. And believe me, do not miss this episode. Uh, great background. Yes. Very Dark Knight. Very, an old school Dark Knight style background uh, referencing the Joker. It was sent in by Andy Newman, mm. not to be confused with, uh, you got a friend in me. Randy. I'm sure oh, he never Randy gets Newman. that. I'm sure he never no, gets know, that. Right. He was like, he's his uncle. Anyway, thanks for sending that in. If you want to have your background on the show, you can send it in fans to fans at, at totally totally <laughs> I love LA. All right, we'll see you. I love it. If you've been watching our show for a long time, perhaps you'll remember when I came back from GDC, I was gushing about a game. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't talk about this game right when it came out, which was a week or two ago now, because we were at Comic-Con. But the game has released on PSN. Hopefully, you already know about it. We're here to tell you what we thought. I'm ex excited to hear what you guys think of Dyad. Dyad is a PSN-exclusive, downloadable game. Uh, it was made by one guy, Sean McGrath, who built this crazy, very difficult to explain kind of experience. A lot of people are comparing it to things like Res and Tempest. Mm. The Tempest uh, description or comparison makes a lot of sense because it's like Tempest, it's, yeah. yeah, like Tempest, you're rotating your uh, avatar around a spherical kind of cone shape while stuff is coming at you. But actually stuff isn't coming at you, you're coming at it and you're hooking yourself onto certain things and propelling yourself through that world. Uh, you get a, uh, a lance effect where you can slam into things uh, and, and score points. And what the game does extraordinarily well, in my opinion, is that it layers on new concepts constantly. Uh, all on top of what is a psychedelic, very visually stimulating set of graphical effects that, uh, you know, probably cause seizures in a lot of people. Yeah. It's, got a, it's got this kind of techno score that, that builds when you play it, that uh, certain actions that you take are, are tied into the, to the music. And the visuals are so colorful and so intense. Did he make the music as well? I mean, uh, there's only one guy. I'm not, I'm not clear on that, perhaps. I think they're all, they're all uh, procedural, so what yeah, you yeah, just yeah. said that was. Did he make the music as well? You were like... Well, I was like, he, oh, so he's good at visuals, good at making it, and right. also is a, it could be a rave smith. runner. I'm not, I'm not clear on that. I could be wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, it's, it, it, is, um, it is the brainchild of one person. It's yeah. a very independent title. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Alex. Yes. Dyad. Yeah, I think you really nailed it on, on, on the head there. Um, the, the thing that's so great about this is the fact that it's one, if you stepped into a middle level, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah. It's impossible. You couldn't, I mean, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't know explain, exactly what the hell was going on. Or, no, or what was happening, what buttons you were supposed to push, why things are making noise, why you're moving <laughs> fast every once in a while, what the greats and okays and times are, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but, that said, if you played this game the way that it is, doled out to you, it's really kind of easy to understand. And mm -hmm. you can, there are concepts that seem like they'd be really hard that you can kind of get yourself behind. It's all about layering them. Yeah. Right? You, kinda, you start yeah. simple and you get yeah. crazy. Yeah. And, and I think that I really enjoyed the game early on as it was kind of l showing me the layers and I felt more in control. And by the end, I was just hanging on for dear life. I mean, <laughs> literally, it's just like, yeah! You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
And so, and and I can, you know, it's, it really is that thing of like the game is at eleven for the majority of the game, and I can only take so much. I mean, it was like I'd play for like 10, 20 minutes. And I was like, I got a bra. <sighs> Oh, you know what really? I mean? Yeah. I felt so, like the the, the, the <clears throat> way that the levels would go back and forth with so many different you objectives. Learn new, you would learn a new concept, and it would and you would only have to worry about that new concept. So it's kind of slowed down for a second, yeah. and then it would ramp up again with that new concept. That's kind of what you're referring to. I, I yeah, guess. yeah, and it was and and it was there was some nice ebb and flow, but for the most part, it was in the arc of ramping up that I kind of was sort of less interested and then I would find the new concept and was like this is cool and then would have some fun playing and about towards the little like you know the upper tail of the different conceptual ends it was sort of like I, I'm, I'm just getting through this so that I can get back to something that I have a lim you know a possible control on although I was very excited because I got uh, was ranked number seven in the world on one level. Wow, we're also playing before the game came out. But that's why I'm excited. I'm excited. That's why I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Um, Dan. That's my name. I know that you love uh, exploring a theme and having new concepts being constantly introduced. I don't think any game does it more elaborately than this game as far as really no, no two levels are the same. And even in a specific level, he gives you alternate challenges to do. And there's so many different things coming at you both literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what you thought of this game. I'm expecting you to love it. I did. So don't disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't love it. You didn't? I did not. Oh, I'm surprised. I know why you, you expect that, and it, and it certainly seems like my cup of tea, but you guys know I'm not a good tea drinker. You hate tea. <laughs> uh, you can't bring it to his mouth. No, I didn't. For, it, it actually was not my cup of tea, and that's the only mm. reason why I didn't love it. Um, what? I, <laughs> because I... <laughs> I would I, I I mean I think it's very well done and I do like all the new abilities that it would sort of reinvent itself as the further you get. I loved I loved like the zip getting to the zip lines, it kinda of felt like, oh, this maybe is where the game starts for me. Like that that felt like I was just sort of starting to have fun with that because I wasn't really having fun. I just don't I just don't I just but I think it's not my cup of tea. It's not fun. This wasn't a fun mechanic for me. And why would you find it stressful or I wasn't even finding it stressful. I never even got to the place where it was like, oh, I never got that. Hmm. But I never it never created that for me. And I kind of wanted that. I get that from Rez. And I and I love the music and these games that this the games that this game is similar to the Sonic oriented games. I love not Sonic the Hedgehog, but whatever. I love the music in Rez and Children of Eden and or Child of Eden or whatever, you know. I did not love the music in this game, and I, I guarantee if I loved the music in this game, I would have loved this game. Um, and I didn't, and I never felt the, um, as I reach a crescendo in the level, the music is also building this beautiful thing, and I'm one with it, like like the last level of Journey, you know? Mm. Like, I never felt one with the music. It, it I thought it would be that kind of game, like Rez, but like, it wasn't like I'm creating the beats of it, or whatever, it was, it well, was. Well, you are. But it, but. I guess because I didn't love the music, it wasn't ever reached a, didn't felt feel cohesive to me. Hmm. Um, well, I, I found that to be exactly the opposite. I, I found the marriage between the music and, and the actions that I was making so, so, um, it would unify the experience in such a profound way that it would almost, he was almost, it felt like the designer of this game was controlling my emotional Experience because exactly there were what I wanted. there were times toward the ends of levels where it would get the music would get cacophonous and 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 I was like ah I'm getting a, and then the visuals would kind of tie into that and everything and I felt like I was I was being uh, orchestrated I was being um, conducted mm. you know I love hmm. that but you didn't have that experience. I didn't have that experience at all mm. but I loved how that sounds <laughs> and that's how I feel with Res or yeah. yeah. Hmm. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised. I really, really, really love this game, as you guys know. Yeah. Um, and I'm so impressed with how much is there that I didn't even see uh, any inkling of in the in the short play test that I had at G GDC. I mean, there's there are so many things that I was like, oh my god, this is. I had no idea it was going this direction either. Yeah. Um, and it, there is so much to do and so many challenges, and it does get very challenging for me, at least. Oh, uh, yeah. There were, there were levels that I just had such a hard time get, just getting through one starring. Yeah. But, and, and you can ramp up from there, and new mechanics. And the game 
demands skill. It doesn't allow you to, you can sort of button mash your way through the first few levels. It actually says, you should probably stop button mashing at this point. It, it does like say early that. Early on in the game. And, and I found that there were, there were levels I couldn't get past and I was like, oh no, well, I need to pick and choose my moments more. I need to take my hand off the, the buttons a little more. And that's how, that's the key to, and that the sense of speed, which I'm surprised that you didn't, um, didn't resonate with you more. Hmm. I love that there were, there are so many levels where it's just how fast can you go? Yeah. Or which I pre which that is fun. Those time ones where you're just like, just try to get through as fast yeah. as you can, and you're yeah. like, ah! or, or just try to get the top speed, yeah. or try to get the longest distance that you can go doing this one particular right. thing. Or there are so many wonderful different kinds of objectives that keep mixing up the pace and mixing up the what you're attempting to do. And there's sometimes when you're trying to be super precise and there's sometimes when you're just trying to not die. And it is it is such a visual feast. And yeah. and I mean, it's the kind of game that you could, I want to have just people over at a party and be like, I want to turn this thing on. You guys have to try this out and crank up the music and on my beautiful television, check it out. Um, I just, I love the game and I, I, I hope people are digging it because um, I'm I'm rooting for the game. I think, of I course. think it's, it's awesome. Got to so. support the indie guys. Yeah, but I mean, I can understand, I think, a little of the high expectation bar that I may have set for you that it didn't live oh, up to. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. <clears throat> All right, everybody, be sure to stick around. We're going to be answering one of your Twitter questions right after this. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, The Ben Heck Show. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show right here every two weeks, revision3.com slash TBHS. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, Ben builds a folding briefcase-sized 3D printer what? that he can take to Maker Faire. Oh, that's rad. Don't forget to go to element14.com slash TBHS to find out how you can enter to win Ben's 3D printer briefcase awesomeness, wanna, as well as other builds I want to enter show. to win Ben Heck's brain and skill set. I don't think that's available. And toolbox. <clears throat> you can buy a toolbox. <laughs> Join us tomorrow when we play Title Fight. Today's Twitter question sent in with the hashtag TRSQ is from at not from Havana, so we don't really know where it's from. If you had to wear the same outfit forever, like a cartoon character, what would it be? I remember a very classic episode. Classic. I remember. It's classic <laughs> an to episode. me. An episode. An episode of the of, of the Smurfs. Which I loved as a kid. Classic. 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 I, know. Classic. I, I edited Solid. myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, that was, uh, um, it always resonates with me because it was Smurfette and she opens her closet and it's like 40 of the sa same exact mm -hmm. dress and she's like, thinking. anyway. I probably would go uh, Donald Duck style, little coat, no pants. <laughs> Every day. I mean, if. I found a cartoon day? character. No, no, no. Like a cartoon character, not oh. you are a cartoon character. Well, but how freeing would that be? No pants, just yeah, for a fancy day. free. Yep. And a little I've coat. all the outfits Hat. to choose forever. Correct. You're saying like I'm, a, I'm actually just a and person. I think that's actually one outfit. I think that's actually called Donald Ducking. <laughs> I had Donald Ducked earlier. Wait, actually, I think it's saying if you had to wear the same outfit forever, like a car car cartoon character is wear the same outfit. What would it be? So what outfit? Just a normal. Yeah. Sort of like, uh, sort of like um, uh, Richard Lewis, the comedian, yeah. always wears black. Right, right. Constantly yeah, 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 yeah. in the right. same black outfit. Right. Yeah. I'd probably dress like Richard Steve Lewis, Jobs. the comedian. It's actually why... Or Steve Jobs. Yeah, there's, yeah. A lot of, there's a lot Chris, of spray. Uh, it didn't Nolan, hit my face, thankfully. Christopher Nolan wears the same suit every day because he doesn't want to like think about... I knew another director like that, actually. That they don't want to think about what they're wearing. You know, They don't want to be a thought. They have to devote time to that. So what would I like that. I clearly misinterpreted this. I won't I'm wear a suit. Now I'm, now now I'm wearing, wearing a shirt and you're, no pants. you're Donald Ducking and, <laughs> and everybody's Donald Ducking out of the way. I know, way. it's got to be something that would, because if I'm going out to... I love that you're being so analytical the, the about shindig, it. A shindig that night, it's got to fit that, but it's also got to fit... Business casual. The heat so the I'm summer. going, okay, here we Business go. Business casual. So I'm going jeans. Dark jeans. Dark jeans, of course. <laughs> right. Oh wait, you guys are going to wear the same outfit between the two of them? We're both analyzing the same thing. Dark jeans, boots, but nice boots that could be dressed down. I'm going to go with a nice pair of shoes. Not sneakers, but shoes, but they could be ca fit into casual life, but they okay. also fit. Okay, night. cool, cool. Yeah. Black t-shirt, blazer, right? Take the blazer off if it gets yeah, hot. I'm with you. Put the blazer on. I don't think cartoon characters ever take the blazer off if it gets hot. I'm just saying. My cartoon character does. I'm going to be the most comfortable with no pants and a little uh, sailor Good pants. question at Not From Havana. Oh, and I'll have a neckerchief. Nice. <laughs>